Well, hello and welcome to this lesson. My name is Reema and today we're going to learn different ways in which you can agree and disagree with people in English. Now I'm going to give you a situation. Sally and Dan, they are colleagues and they're having a heated discussion at work. Now there are times when Sally completely agrees with Dan. There are times when she completely disagrees with Dan. So let's say I'm going to teach you ways in which Sally can agree and disagree with Dan. Now first off I have this line if you put it that way I suppose so over here Dan happens to be great with words. He's very convincing. So Sally is agreeing with Dan because of the way he's putting things into words. So that's when she can say if you put it that way meaning if you use those words I suppose I can agree with you. So this is how you agree with people who are convincing you through the words that they are using. Obviously certain words are more convincing than others. Now the next way in which Sally can agree with Dan is I'll go along with that. Now sometimes Sally is not sure whether she agrees with Dan but she does not see another way out. That's when she can say I'll go along with that meaning I'll kind of agree with you for the time being. So she is just going along with Dan's words. Now, in case there are times when Sally really believes that Dan is speaking the truth, that's when she can say, I'll take your word for it. You normally use these words, take your word for it or take your word on it when you really believe or you really trust the other person and you believe that they're speaking the truth. So well, in case she feels that way, then Sally can say, okay, I'll take your word on it and agree with you. Moving on, now there are some areas in which Dan is the expert. That's right, he has more knowledge than Sally on certain areas, certain fields of work. Now in such cases, Sally agrees with him because he has more knowledge. In such cases, she can say, well, you're the expert and hence I have to agree with you. So that's how you agree with people who have more knowledge than you on a particular subject. Moving on, imagine there are times when Sally and Dan completely agree with each other. In fact, they are in total complete agreement with each other. In such cases, Sally can say, I couldn't agree with you more. Now, although this sentence is negative because we are using couldn't or could not, it actually means that Sally completely agrees with Dan. So it says, I could not or I couldn't agree with you more, which means I totally and completely agree with you. Moving on. Sometimes Sally and Dan share the same opinion on a particular subject. When that's the case, whatever Dan says, Sally just replies saying, I second that, meaning I share the same opinion. Now sometimes Sally is agreeing with Dan but reluctantly, meaning unwillingly or in a disinterested manner. So sometimes Sally is doubtful but because she does not have a valid reason to disagree, she chooses to agree. In such cases, Sally can say, I still have my doubts but for now, I choose to agree with you. And there are many times when we're not completely sure of our side of the argument. That's when, although we have doubts, we choose to agree with the person in front of us. Moving on, 
Those rare cases when Sally and Dan totally agree with each other, that's when Sally can say, you have my full agreement, which means there are no doubts over here. And lastly, let's say Dan comes up with absolutely valid and correct points and Sally has been won over by his argument. That's when she can say, well, you have convinced me or you have completely convinced me. Now, the word convinced here stands for Sally being in total agreement with Dan's views. Well, yes, those were a few ways in which Sally could agree with Dan. Now, what about when Sally wants to disagree with Dan? I must say that disagreeing and that too politely without hurting the feelings of the other person is an art and it is fairly difficult. So let's look at a few ways in which Sally and Dan, when they are not in agreement with each other, can disagree without sounding rude. Now, first off, let's say Sally is agreeing with Dan, but not completely. So instead of saying, I completely disagree with you, which is kind of rude, she could just say, I agree with you up to a point which means till a certain point I agree with you but I do not agree with you completely. Now that sounds so much milder than just saying that's rubbish I don't agree with you because that is fairly rude. Moving on let's say that Dan has a particular reasoning for why he's saying certain things and Sally feels that his reasoning is valid but she still does not agree with him. Then she could say, well, you could say that, however, I do not agree with you. Or she could say, you could put it that way, however, I do not agree with you. So instead of say that, she could also say, put it that way. So when Sally says this, it's quite obvious that her views are different from Dan's views. Okay, moving on, let's see the next one. Although I can see where you're coming from, I do not agree with you. Now over here, Sally is kind of showing a particular understanding or compassion for Dan's views. She says that she understands where Dan is coming from, meaning she understands why Dan has certain opinions or thoughts on a particular subject, but she still chooses to disagree with him. So when you use the phrase where you're coming from, it actually means where your thoughts are coming from. Okay, so although Sally can understand where Dan's thoughts or opinions are coming from, she chooses to disagree with him. The next one is very, very interesting because over here, Sally is actually putting herself in Dan's shoes. Now, let's say it wasn't Dan who was trying to convince Sally. It was Sally trying to convince Dan. But she says, I wouldn't quite put it that way if I were you meaning Sally is saying if she had to present the argument in place of Dan she would put it or she would word it differently so over here she disagrees with Dan by saying I wouldn't quite put it that way and the unspoken thing over here is if I were you So Sally is choosing to agree by saying, I wouldn't put it, quite put it that way if I were you and hence I disagree with you. And I think that's a very smart and intelligent way of disagreeing with someone by saying that you seem to be right in your place but if I were you, I wouldn't put it that way. Now let's see the next one. Okay, this one is fairly cut and dry. Here Sally says, I can't go along with that. 
So when you say can't go along with something, it seems to say that you can't agree with it. So Sally is saying I can't go along with that, meaning I can't seem to agree with that and hence I disagree with you. Well, obviously, if you can't agree with something, you clearly disagree. Moving on. Okay, now this one, this particular one, you can save for when you are totally disagreeing with somebody. So here, Sally says, that's totally out of the question, meaning there is absolutely no room for agreement. This is total disagreement. So yes, totally out of the question stands for total disagreement. Now one should save this for absolutely extreme cases when there is absolutely no room for agreement. Moving on, okay, now this one is quite diplomatic. Over here, Sally says, I find that very difficult to accept, okay. So she's not directly telling Dan that I disagree with you, she's kind of saying, I find your argument or I find the opinions that you're putting forward very difficult to accept, which is basically that she disagrees with him. So this is actually a very diplomatic and interesting way to disagree with somebody and you can use this at work just the way Sally is using with Dan. And the next one is, okay, similarly, this one is also very diplomatic and fairly polite. Here Sally says, we don't seem to be in complete agreement. Well, she could have said something like, we completely disagree. But that would have come across as rude. So she's using a subtle, gentle manner of disagreeing and saying, we don't seem to be in complete agreement, which means we disagree. So not being in complete agreement over here stands for disagree. Okay, and last but not the least, this is when you've actually heard out the person completely. Now say Dan has been talking to Sally for the past 30 minutes and really explaining his opinions, his viewpoints, and she still does not want to agree with him, then she can say at the end to culminate the conversation, all said and done, I have my doubts which means after hearing you out, although you have some valid opinions, I still do not agree with you. Well, that's the way you do it if you have a corporate conversation happening, a conversation at work happening, because clearly you don't want to come across as too harsh or too rude. Well, I really hope you learned all the ways in which to agree and disagree with a person, especially at work. And if you keep practicing all of these ways, then you're going to get really good at it. I really hope you enjoyed this lesson. And if you have enjoyed this lesson, do subscribe to our channel. This is me, Reema, signing out, saying bye-bye and take care. And I'll see you with yet another lesson very soon.